this all crap. This is the place to go for anime, manga, comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Black and Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Black and. You're listening to the Eliza Baby Show. Those sexy little boys down there in Black and Studios. And I just want to sponsor y'all and tell y'all good job. Thanks for downloading the Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Providing bankruptcy services throughout the state of Oklahoma, Bowler & Associates is a bankruptcy law firm based in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Their mission is to relieve you from threat of debt collectors, garnishments, repossessions, tax levies, foreclosures, and much more. Backed by more than 20 years of experience in the legal field, they excel in finding the quickest, most effective, and most affordable solution to all your legal and financial troubles. You can find them at Bowler Law on Facebook and also visit the website at www.bowlerlawfirm.com. Reach them at 405-733-3000. You can also email them at bankruptcy at bowlerandassociates.com. What is up, everybody? Uh, I can hear the music. I don't know if you can hear music, but I am Elijah 5000, and this is another episode of the Elijah Bailey Show. Now, things are a little bit different. I I feel like the camera's cattywampus just a little bit, but I'm not going to focus on that. That's a Buck thing, and and, and Buck's not here, as you can see. Uh, As you can also see, it is 3 a.m., and as you can also see, it's Wednesday. It's not Sunday, so there's a a couple changes uh, coming to the show. There's a couple things that are going a little bit differently uh, Buck's focusing more on producing because we have a lot more shows at the studio. And then with COVID and me being an essential worker and out amongst a lot of places that uh, are, I guess, secretly keeping their COVID cases uh, from from everybody. Uh, I'm working in those stores, so I could be asymptomatic. Um, they don't test us regularly. So uh, I want to make sure to keep everybody safe at the studio. So I am recording from home. Uh, while Bucky is at the studio, and uh, he will be in and out every now and then of the show. Uh, that being said, we're still going to do the show kind of in the similar format. It's been crazy. We've been gone for like a month uh, due to uh, the pandemic, yeah, pneumonia, the election, work. Uh, here in Oklahoma, we had the ice storm, so it knocked out power. I just now got Cox back, so it looks like uh, the streaming health is 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 good today. Like the stream health is very good. I'm excited. Uh, everything is is looking nice. I think we'll be able to do some Ghost of Tsushima streams today. I think we'll be able to. We're we're back in business, as as, as Mortimer would say. Mortimer, Mortimer, we're back in business. Um, but yeah, that that's the the lowdown on the show. So yeah, Bucky is out just for a bit, but I'm still here. And if you are new to the Elijah Bailey show, each week of the month uh, is something different, a different theme. The first week of the month is comics. Second week of the month is anime. Third week is video games. Fourth week is the Bailey Bugle. And I know where we are. You know, this could be a Bailey Bugle episode. This could be whatever. You know, you know what? We're, we're going to do things just a, a little bit different anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and cue up some music. Let's do... Oh, where's that one music at? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, here we go. The sky. I'm five and angels right now. That's that music. Uh, welcome to another episode. The Bailey Bugle. This is the Bailey Bugle theme. If you guys have never heard it, this is the theme that we do for the Bailey Bugle. We've only played like a couple times because we mixed it up with the Life Bailey Show. Theme, but we are here for episode 241 of the Electric Bailey Show slash The Baby Viewer. All right, thank you, guy. Oh, this, this, we, we can't, we, we can't do this. We can't play this music right here. Um, but we're here for the show, and we're gonna kick things off a little bit differently. We're gonna go right into uh, the news. Now, there's been a couple things that me and Buck have talked about. Uh, I there's been so many things from Dragon Ball GT to No Blaze to the latest anime to Xbox Series X and, and, and Stadia. So let's get into some of the latest uh, deals. So we're gonna go over to Anime News Network. Two things: 
a legendary manga creator passes, we have Surichiku or Suri, Suriki Ichi Sanpai, manga creator Tako Yaguchi passes away at 81. So the manga creator Takio Yaguchi passed away due to pancreatic cancer in the Tokyo hospital on November 20th. He was 81 years old. His family held a private funeral. His daughter, Karo, uh, made the announcement through her father's Twitter account on Wednesday. She added that her father has been ill for half a year since he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in May. Uh, the Yokote Masude Manga Museum, a museum in Yokote City dedicated to Yaguchi's works, uh, announced on Wednesday that it will hold a gathering to celebrate and remember Yaguchi uh, at a later date. Yaguchi was born in 1939 in Yokote City um, in Akita Pre uh, Prefecture. He is uh, perhaps best known for the Surkiichi Sampai Fish Manga, which ran from uh, ran in Kodanchi's weekly shonen manga from 1970. 73 to 1983 and had 65 compelled and completed books um, let's see it inspired a television anime series that ran from 1980 to 1982 the manga also inspired a live action film in 2009 the uh, Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology gave him the Regional Person of Cultural Merit Award in 2009. This year marked his 50th year as a professional artist. So uh, November 20th, we lost a great and innovative a, uh, creator in the space of manga um, that we're no longer going to see. And I'm looking at some of the stuff now which you can go to Elijah Bailey's show on Patreon or just go to um, uh, send us an email at Elijah Bailey's show at gmail.com and you can get a link to his works. He has a very unique style, almost uh, seems like the old uh, Smurf cartoons that they used to do. They used to do Smurf little comic books, little half round comic books they used to put in cereal boxes, things like that. They had Smurf comics and it kind of looks like that kind of a little bit of a Western spin because the main character doesn't look, I mean, he, he looks Japanese, but kind of not Japanese, but, um, yeah, we'll have a link to where you can find his work, but that's crazy to have someone that revolutionary pass away. Uh, so recent. Ah, thanks, Donna. Thank you for liking the stream. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, uh, yeah. I need to turn on my bat, my uh, chat bot to get rid of those. Okay, so next bit of news. Voice actor Masayo Onosaka diagnosed with COVID-19, but is now asymptomatic. So the uh, voice actor uh, from agency's Anio Productions announced on Wednesday that Osono uh Ono Onosaka had tested positive uh, for the new coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Uh, he received his PCR test results on Tuesday. The announcement noted that Horochi is currently asymptomatic for the COVID-19 disease and that his condition is stable with no fever or cough. Uh, and a... Uh, uh, NOE production reported that Onosoka had developed a fever late Saturday evening and visited the hospital the next day. He then underwent a PCR test and received a positive test result on Tuesday. So he will not be uh, allowed. The company also apologized for causing concern and inconvenience. The agency stated that it is taking appropriate measures according to guidelines and uh, the guidance from the medical experts and government uh, agencies to ensure that health of its patrons act Actors and staff. Um, some of Onosaka's no, uh, most notable roles are Vasta Stampede in Trigun, True Form uh, Cerebos in Card Captor Sakura, Ken Was uh, Washio in the uh, 1994 Gotcha Man OVA, Forker in Power Stone, and the list goes on from Grin Lagan to the Soul Taker to One Punch Man. So uh, another famous voice actor. Again, the Trigun name stands out. You know about me and, and, and Buck. That's one of our shows. Uh, we, we hate to see voice actors getting sick. We hate to see anybody getting sick with COVID. Well, we hate to see some people get sick with COVID. Um, but it's been crazy how it's been impacting the the manga space and the anime space because they still can't work and and some of their work they're in you know they're in booths they're away from people but pe multiple people are using those booths throughout the day they're in there with the producer they're going over lines they're in the confined space in and out so 
Uh, it's, it's changed the uh, the landscape, and they've had to make a lot of changes, push back a lot of movie releases, a lot of uh, TV show releases. Um, I think they were just talking about, uh, what was it? We just got a trailer for something. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. And, I, and of course, I'm getting this uh, news from AnimeNewsNetwork.com. But I think I was trying to see. There's like two anime where they had some trailers uh, coming out. And I can't even remember what trailers they are, but everything got pushed back. One of them is the new Seven Deadly Sins TV animation. Uh, it revealed the theme song, but they had a trailer that they were getting ready to release and had to push that back. Uh, let's make our way over to uh, GameInformer.com because there's something I saw earlier that I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite games. I found this game back on the original place, uh, P- PS1, the original PlayStation. It was called Red Dead Revolver. Uh, then they came out Red Dead Redemption and then Red Dead Redemption 2. And the latest bit of news, because I still play Red Dead Redemption 2, I have not finished the game yet. So that's one reason, but also the multiplayer is amazing. Uh, Red Dead Online will be a standalone game starting next month. Now, I've seen this a lot of places. The reason I pulled it from uh, Game Informer is because there's a couple other news articles I want to read to you guys, too. But Red Dead Online is the multiplayer cowboy experience that branches off of Rockstar's game, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, For those that want to live out in the cowboy fantasy with friends without paying for Red Dead Redemption 2, Red Dead Online will be launching as a standalone game next month for a small fee. Beginning on December 1st, 2020 until February 15th, 2021, Red Dead Online will be available to purchase but uh, uh, by itself on both Epic Games Store and Steam for $5, as well as PlayStation and Microsoft stores in addition to the Rockstar Game Launcher itself. Uh, for those that choose to purchase Red Dead Online as a standalone, they will have access to all of the past and current content um, immediately with future content updates included. Uh, become a bounty hunter, uh, become the uh, wild naturist, the naturalist, uh, the worst enemy as a trader, or play anybody that you want to in Red Dead Online. So I think that's pretty cool that they're bringing it to to everybody for five bucks now. That is, again, from December 1st through February 15th. Uh, If you're interested, but on the fence, there is one important thing to note. The price during the aforementioned time period is a small $5 fee. After February 15th, the online game will uh, will still be available as a standalone, but the price will be $20 at that point. If you're at all interested... Pull together uh, before the price goes up again. Five dollars at the game store, uh, PlayStation, Microsoft, and Steam. If you wait till after February fifteenth, uh, it's going to be twenty bucks. And right now, there's a lot of shit online. I had fun. I played online for like six hours, would, would really doing nothing. So make sure to go ahead and get that uh, when it comes out December first. Because what is it? It's, Jan- it's November twenty fifth now. It's coming up. Uh, next one, I thought this was cool because I, I love the movie. I mean, if if you're a, a 90s kid like me, you got to love the movie. Uh, what's up, love? Thanks. Hey, say, uh, thanks for saying hi. Uh, we're going to Mortal Kombat. So the classic MK movie skin pack available now. Mortal Kombat 11's classic MK movie skin pack lets players relive the 1995 film. Uh, 1995's Mortal Kombat is probably the best video game movie ever, uh, in this editor's humble opinion. And this comes from Marcus Stewart, again, Game Informer. This was uh, November 24th, yesterday. Um, So, uh, the Mortal Kombat players can rock Johnny Cage $500 sunglasses or enjoy Raiden's sarcastic uh, rasp. The classic MK movie pack... um, not only give Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and Raiden. Who is that? Hey, thanks for falling in love. I love it. Yes, a new follower. That puts us at 208. Yes, thank you. Um, the classic MK skin pack. Not only give Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and Raiden their uh, cinematic outfits, but they even sport the actors' likenesses and voices. Uh, Bridget Wilson, Lyndon Ashby, and Christopher Lambert. Uh, respectively, and Christopher Lambert is the best Raiden out there. Uh, don't at me. This is, it's just what it is. Uh, while it's uh, disappointing to miss out on Rob Lowe's uh, Liu Kang, this pack act uh, as a great uh, accompaniment to Carrie 
Hiroyoku's uh, Tagawa's Shang Sun, who served as the central character uh, of the Aftermath campaign expansion. So if you guys haven't been playing MK, and the, the only reason I have not jumped on Mortal Kombat 11 is just because I don't have a steady group to play with. If you want to get down on MK11, let me know. I will purchase it, and we will get down. And it'll probably be something that we stream regularly because I love the games. I used to play up the tower, play through the tier, um, but I just haven't got on it. But, again, they've been coming out with these skin packs. They've been adding people. Like, the last one that I saw, um, well, it's not the last one I saw, but the most interesting one I saw was Rambo. And the reason it was interesting because there was a Baki and Rambo crossover, and now they're bringing Rambo into Mortal Kombat 11. So you're going to get the characters and villains that you want. Um, this classic uh, Mortal Kombat movie skin pack right now is five uh, ninety nine. Go ahead and purchase it. PlayStation, Microsoft. Uh, and I think everything will transfer as you upgrade to PS5 and Xbox Series X. So look out for that. Again, if you've not seen the 95 classic Mortal Kombat, go watch it. It's beautiful. It is a thing. The first one. The second one, the the, anim, the Animorphs. I, I read the books. I, I didn't need to see it. Um, okay, this was cool. Uh, and I don't have my Google Doc pulled up, but that's that's fine. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show, you will get to see the six. It's six minutes and like 38 seconds long, 48. I think it's 38 seconds long, but uh, we had a new Cyberpunk 2077 PS5 gameplay. And it, it showed PS4 Pro. And then it switched and showed the gameplay on the PS5. And it, it was amazing. You can watch the whole thing on YouTube or you can go to patreon.com. Like I said, it'll be on the link. You click the hyperlink. You can watch there. Um, but the gameplay that we saw, we saw the character that you're playing is V. And you're riding in the car with a, a Latinx a character named Jackie, who's a big kind of thug. And you guys are drug smuggling. You're transporting something. So... You drive through a checkpoint, you go in, um, it shows you checking in your gun, it shows you walking to a room, uh, objectivity, you're listening, you're responding, you're basing your question and responses off of that. I thought it was really, I thought it reminded me of the first time that I played, like, Grand Theft, I would say Grand Theft Auto Vice City, but with Grand Theft Auto 5 graphics excuse me, mixed in with almost like what was a heavy rain type choices, but you're limited to how many choices you have. If that kind of makes sense. Cause it's a darker, heavier feel you're going in. You're like, what are you, they're like, what are you transporting? It's like, it's all there in the paper. So you already know you're going to have problems with the authorities. You know that whatever you're doing went sideways um, you see these elite forces take out you know, these uh, criminals that have been augmented. You also talk with the mechanic. You learn that you yourself can make um, changes and alterations and fix your car yourself. But there's consequences to everything you do because the mechanic's like, well, you know, if you do that, it, you know, there's no telling when it'll go out. And you're like, so I don't care. I just need to get my car running. And it's just beautiful. Uh City Project Red did a great job. They start off by showing you the customization and kind of just talking to you about what's getting ready to happen in the gameplay. And one thing that I want, you guys have pushed this game back, and and I'm fine with that. But if I get to customization and my character doesn't have doesn't have the type of hair that I have, doesn't have a hairstyle that I've seen or I've sported at one point in time in my life, I'm going to be pissed off because you have all this time to be inclusive. Um, I do know that designing curlier hair is harder. But if you do that, it makes the character more immersive for your players. And then there's also games that are coming out later for PS5 and Xbox Series X that talked about taking that time, listening to the audience, the demographics that is buying games and, and wanting uh, to be included and not excluded. So I just hope that we have 
uh, great customization because it looks like it's so far and they put a lot of work into it. But if you can't do shit like that, then you, you guys missed the point. But this six minutes was beautiful. If you guys go and watch it, it's the Night City Border Patrol outpost uh, gameplay. Uh, you're nomad class, and I, and that's what the gameplay says. You're going through this no, nomad campaign, so there's going to be a lot of functionality, a lot of different things you can do. But I would go ahead and um, watch it because it'll give you a good feel for what you're in for. Then one of the devs played over 175 hours on Cyberpunk uh, 2077, and, and he still hasn't beaten the game. <clears throat> so there's a lot here for you guys. Uh, what else is in the news? There's one more thing I wanted to pull from here. Da, 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 da. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh, yeah, Animal Crossing New Horizons, how to increase your house storage. Uh, that'll be, I'll do another video, and I'm going to do an Animal Crossing video. Let's make our way over to comicbooknews.com. Now, the one that I was looking at, <sighs> Buck's not here for this. <sighs> oh, God. Okay, Buck's not here for this. We're, we're still going to have to talk about it. There's there's not, you can't do anything. We're, we're going to have to talk about this. Uh, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, Dragon Ball Super came back. And we're looking at episode or chapter 66, 65 or 66. Okay, 65. Okay, so 65 comes about. And we're trying to figure out what's going to happen because Goku, and what I'm going to try to do is pull it up for you guys. I, I know. I feel I feel so bad <laughs> uh, not being able to do this with Buck. because He's not here, though. He's not here. I'm going to log into my account. Uh, Buck's not here. We can't, we can't, I can't just harp on it. Okay. So last episode, Goku kind of commemorates, um, Miris's death. He passes. We find out and spoilers. If you guys have not watched any of the Dragon Ball Super anime, if you haven't read any of the Dragon Ball Super manga, uh, while I'm doing all this talking, this is your time to tune out for the next five to ten minutes um, because we're we're going to go into it. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, back to Dragon Ball Super. So okay, last time we see that um, Goku has mourned more uh, Miras for his death. We know that angels cannot interact with the humanity if they do. You know their energy. They fade into nothing. Uh, it was actually, yeah, it was chapter 66. Yeah, I'm already following this. Why are you asking me this? It's in my deal. This is so stupid. And so Goku does Ultra Instinct. He doesn't really lose his cool. He's more of a calm, collected Saiyan than what we've seen before. Uh, Goku is super calm. He is getting his power level up and he's being uh, Moro, but Moro gets desperate and realizes that a piece of his body that touched Miris has uh, fallen on the ground and he could absorb that into his body and become an even better, you know, version of himself. And what I'm doing now is getting ready to pull up the manga. So he absorbs Miras, who is an angel. He gets his power and absorbs himself into the planet. So here we see the battlefield, the planet's rumbling. My body hurts all of a sudden. And that is because Moro started absorbing energy from the planet and Vegeta realizes it uh, being one of the only Saiyans in history and only people outside of the Yadrit to complete their um, training that he's stealing energy from the planet. And if they touch the planet, he's stealing it from them. We see him fighting Goku, which this is a cool scene to see how fast and how skilled Goku is in the Ultra Instinct. And no matter what he's up, the only thing is like Mir, uh, Moro is the planet. So if Goku destroys him, he destroys the planet. We also see that Beerus is here, you know, like, ugh, I guess I'll go ahead and lend Goku a hand because I can't let him destroy Earth. You know, it has great food, blah, blah, blah. And then we see this beeping happening on Whis's, uh angel staff and the Grand Priest is calling him to the planet immediately. 
immediately Beerus says, fuck this planet. We've got to go see the Grand Prix. So if the planet gets blown up, it'll get blown up. And Goku's having trouble still. Whis kind of interjects and um, is telling Goku he needs to hurry up and end this. Otherwise, Earth is going to be fucked up. Well, Vegeta gets his power back. He does his new Yadrat um, key manipulation technique and hits the planet. And the little the uh, little diamond in the middle of Moro's head starts to come back out. And that's what they need. Goku needs to destroy it. As you can see, he tries to fly over and destroy it. He's zooming through the hands. Unfortunately, the hands grab him. And this is this time Goku's been helped. He was getting ready to get helped by Beerus. Then he gets helped by Whis because Whis tells him he needs to destroy this. He's trying to go through all these hands. He gets slowed down. He's stuck. He can't get through it. And all his energy is gone. The next thing um, that you know, where is this at? Yeah, he's Goku's trying to reach. Uh, he runs out of energy. Then we have a scene from the Cell games or a scene from, it, I mean, the movies, the show. This has happened many times. They're going to give their energy to Goku. So Vegeta takes everybody's energy. He gives it to Goku. He gets energy from Dende. He's launched to Goku. Goku's getting close to Moro. But it's just not enough. Like, this new form needs more energy. So what happens is we see this big-ass ball of energy. Bam, look at this motherfucker here. You see who that is in the bottom left corner? That's Oob. When this fucking thing started, did Goku was talking to Dende, and Dende said, hey, you need to keep an eye out on this baby, right? And now we see Oob as a kid. So I... I'm going to go back and read through the manga and see how much time passed between the baby and Ubi being and this boy. And then also we see that Majin Buu is no longer Majin Buu, but he's the uh, Supreme Kai. So now we've got two Ultra characters that have sent their power to Goku. Goku gets this big power boost uh, from Vegeta. Looks like a spirit bomb. And uh, Goku becomes a god. He absorbs the energy. The energy's overflowing. And he... Astro projects his body fighting Moro as the Earth, and we have Super Saiyan Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Goku. He's in the middle of the head. This has happened in Naruto. This has happened in, in a lot of different things, and I feel like with Goku, you know, he he breaks the glass. He knew this was going to happen. That they weren't going to leave us on that cliffhanger, but he breaks the glass as he hits Moro on the head. Um, Moro dies and here's the earth and Goku turns back in grand fashion, just like he did in the Boo saga and bam gives everybody the thumbs up. So we see this thumbs up from Goku. We see what happened. Our is Akira saying that the world no longer needs Goku. Like, is he that? Cause he just asked her like, if Goku has that power boost again, he, and again, he got that power presumably just from Oob, Kid Oob, Kid Oob, maybe the Supreme Kai as well, but I feel like it's just from Kid Oob. That was more energy than all the Z fighters with Vegeta on this level that couldn't help Goku. So now Goku he can hold that much energy. If he can do that and he can astral project himself, is he higher than humanity? Does, does his universe's uh, mortal level go up? And is this the point where Goku and Vegeta leave earth? Like, do they take their families and leave earth? Do Chi Chi and Bulma, Gohan leave earth and they leave earth to Oob and the rest of humanities? Cause really Oob is a human. Oob is the, the reincarnation of Boo who is a human. So now that you have a human that has a high enough power level to challenge a Saiyan who is you motherfuckers are up there, that planet's more levels up. Vegeta and Goku go and they start the new, you know, Saiyan planet, that planet, you know, is more levels up. You have new Namek who produced Dende and can produce stronger Namek's. Let's say, you know, what's, I, I feel like this is, I feel it just feels weird. Like 2020 is the year that they'll be like, you know what? Dragon Ball is done. We're done with it. It started in the eighties. We're done. I feel like it's going to be, be one of those things where this is the end of the era and, and it's okay. 
I, I, I don't want to see that, but I can understand it. But it feels like Goku. Excuse me. Is uh about to leave everybody behind, and that's the best case scenario. I can say that if Goku and Vegeta don't leave now, I feel like Goku and Vegeta stay. They continue their training here and with Whis and Beerus and also with Oob, and then Oob takes over and they leave eventually. Um, which also allows you know Trunks and Goten to grow up, get girlfriends, maybe have families. And that right there, as they go to another planet to repopulate, they can also have pick up other species because, yeah, you still have Vegeta's brother out there who's uh, canon. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Um, it's just crazy, though. But that chapter, chapter had me, had me right by the nuts. Uh, let's swing over to GameSpot.com real quick. Uh, because there's two of these. Now, I don't know if the other one was Walmart or Best Buy, but Walmart, PS5, and Xbox Series X restock now. Uh, the update on that is, update, due to high demand, the PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S restock will not be available on Walmart again until next Wednesday, November 25th at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time and then 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's fucked up. As part of Walmart's Black Friday 2020 is special. So they were supposed to have these series, but again, due to high demand, it's going to be held off until the 25th, which is today is the 25th. So today you can go and uh, six or nine, go try to pick up, you know, the PS5 and the Xbox. But I think there was another story that came out. Uh, how many hours ago? Let's see. This is November 24, just a few hours ago. This came out at 4.22 p.m. yesterday. Now, this isn't like too big of a story, and this doesn't tie into the Walmart, but this is GameSpot or GameStop. GameStop will have Xbox Series X bundles tonight. So every it seems like everything's coming in on the 25th or everything is being uh, shipped and received on the 25th. Uh, GameSpot has announced uh, it will... Hang on one second. We got this commercial plan. That's another game I need to get, Call of Duty. But uh, GameStop has announced it will have the Xbox Series X bundle today, but unfortunately this is the extent of its uh, its restock. The retailer doesn't divulge specific things or hint at how much uh, stock it has. Further, it appears this stock is limited to just bundles for now. In other words, if you were hoping to buy just Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S consoles by themselves, you'll seemingly out of luck, which has happened years ago. And I think this really happened pretty big with the Xbox 360, didn't it? Where all they had was like bundles for the uh, the 360. And then like, well, we, oh, this is all we got. And everybody had to buy the bundles, but they got a shit ton of games. Um not only are they more expensive, uh, which scares off many customers, but scalpers and bots don't go as hard uh, in the paint for bundles because their resale value isn't that great. What Microsoft, what Microsoft does say is that uh, if you want one, then make sure your index fingers are warmed up. Uh, so get your index fingers warmed up because Xbox Series X slash X console bundles will be available today online only at GameStop.com, said the retailer in an email sent out to its customers. This limited number of bundles will go live soon. Be uh, sure to clear your cart, get logged in and ready to go. And if you're not able to get one, take uh, take heart in knowing that we'll continue to notify you when more Xbox Series X slash S consoles are available. Uh, as for the PS5, uh, there's currently no word on the restock coming today, and for now it's unclear when the console will be available again, but when it is made available, it will be clear uh, that it will also be in bundle fashion as well. And that was also to, to be expected with with them already saying that they, they didn't have as much as they said they did, that they knew they were, they were going to be out the first day. You know, I don't know why anybody's surprised. This is stuff that we already knew. One thing that I do, and this is what I'm looking for, Funko I Love You 3000 Avengers Endgame Pop 2-pack drops on Black Friday. Uh, and let's switch screens so you guys can see the Funko. Bam. Okay, so here we go. So here's the Funko Pop right there. Uh, Funko's I Am Iron Man P exclusive pop figure captured a heartbreaking moment from the Avengers Endgame 
But your Marvel Avengers pop figure collection won't be complete without even more heartbreaking I Love You 3000 follow-up pop two-pack exclusive. Funko's latest Marvel pop uh, figure exclusive features hologram Tony Stark and the Iron Man hologram helmet from the funeral scene and Tony Stark's daughter Morgan in the rescue helmet. Uh, if you want, and this right here was her at the house when she had the helmet on and he's like, what's that? And it was, it was it, that's for mom. And he was working on the helmet and this is the hologram that he left at the funeral, which if you didn't know already, just by looking at those shame on you. Uh, but, uh, if you want to get your hands on one, uh, so you can cry every time you see it, even in the dark, because it glows, which you can tell because it's, it's that blue. Here's what you need to know. The release date for the Morgan and hologram Tony Stark helmet, uh, pop vinyl two pack is black Friday, November 27 at precisely 9 a.m. Pacific or 12 p.m. Eastern standard time. Uh, it will be available here at the pop in a box exclusive at that time. And we uh, wouldn't be surprised if it sells out quickly. Uh, if, when that does happen, odds are it will end up here on eBay after launch. So all these links you can click. And again, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show and go to this exact article and click those links. So that way you can get the Funko pops, uh, that you want. But again, Morgie in the rescue helmet and uh, Tony Stark as hologram Iron Man. And last bit of news, we jump back over to GameSpot.com. Fortnite Crew. Okay. So I, I've been getting into Fortnite. So Fortnite Crew is a uh, $12 subscription that gives Battle Pass access and monthly V-Bucks. Starting December 2nd, Epic Games is introducing a new monthly subscription called the Fortnite uh, called for Fortnite that gives players the current battle pass V bucks and other perks. And this came out November 24th Fortnite developer Epic games is introducing a new monthly subscription for the popular battle Royale shooter. The subscription is called Fortnite crew and it'll cost $12 a month and give players access to various uh, perks, including the game's current battle pass, a monthly stipend of 1000 V bucks each month and exclusive skins. Fortnite crew launches along the uh, the start of Chapter 2, Season 5, on December 2nd, Epic Games announced on the PlayStation blog. As the studio explains, the, studio, uh, the subscription gives players access to the game's current battle pass, even if your subscription lapses before the season ends. Those who sign up for Fortnite crew after uh, they've already purchased the battle pass will have the 950 V-Bucks refunded to their account. There's also a trailer that you can click or you can go on YouTube that's been posted by PlayStation for the subscription to go into more detail so that way you're not missing anything whatsoever. Um, and again, you can read these articles on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey Show. But in addition to the uh, battle pass access, Fortnite crew gives uh, subscribers 1,000 V-Bucks each month on top of any V-Bucks you can earn while leveling up that season's battle pass. Additionally, Epic will uh, give subscription uh, subscribers an exclusive Fortnite crew pack each month, uh, which will contain a new skin and at least one match glider, uh, matching glider, uh, pickaxe, and emote. You'll keep the exclusive cosmetics even if you don't re-up your subscription, so you don't have to worry about those going, which is really cool. Uh, a lot of things, if you don't continue paying, you lose that shit or lose games themselves. So to be able to keep what you've already purchased with uh, e-money, e-currency that you've you've acquired through gameplay is amazing. Or through subscription. The first Fortnite crew pack will uh, feature a skin for Galaxia, the Empress of the Cosmos, which looks badass as hell. Uh, the outfit will come with one additional style. A uh, cosmetic uh, pickaxe and fractured world back bling. Uh, Epic says players will be able to subscribe for Fortnite crew directly from Fortnite's in-game shop or the Battle Pass purchase screen after Chapter 2 Season 5 goes live. In the meantime, Fortnite's players, and again, this happens December 2nd. So in the meantime, Fortnite players have been uh, busy trying to predict uh, how Season 4 will end. And it appears that Season 4 will wrap up with an epic battle against Galactus. Uh, the supervillain will arrive in the game as part of a special season ending event on December 1st, just one day before the new pack comes. The event begins at 1 p.m. 
uh, Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. But Epic reminds players, log into the game about an hour before the scheduled start time. Uh, the playlist will appear about 30 minutes prior to the event, and then you're off to the races. So this is the last bit of news for today's Bailey Bugle slash Elijah Bailey Show episode Fortnite. If you just got into Fortnite like me, this is perfect. $12 a month. It's cool to get the V-Bucks, to get your skin every month, the emote, and to also have access to this battle pass. So why wouldn't you do it? It's only $12. Uh, let's do this. Let's take a quick pause for the cause and we're going to come back with anime and manga of the month. So I'll be right back with episode 241 of the Elijah Bailey show right after this. Let's face it. Mechs can be expensive initially and to maintain. Do yourself a favor and cut the cost down to the bare nuts and bolts. Studies show that regular application of GW40 can reduce the wear and tear from exposure to harsh environments. Joints clog with sand? GW40 will fix it. Visors covered in ice and frost with a little GW40? Watch as it melts right off. Save your mech time and money with GW40. Gun damn. Are you a thug, pickpocket, mafioso, yakuza, delinquent? or just plain degenerate, then you're exactly who we're looking for. If you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you want to travel the Southeast Asian waters taking what you want and giving nothing back, then come to the center of town and sign up to be a part of the Lagoon's crew. We guarantee food and shelter, more or less, and the time of your life. We are back. So let's go right into it. Anime and Manga of the Month. And I was like, looking, I was like, where's Anime and Manga of the Month? I forgot I never pulled up my Google Docs. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. Um, and since since we got off so bad, this will be Anime and Manga of the Day. Uh, as soon as, well, yeah, next week. We'll have a new anime and manga for the month of December. So, again, you have a week to watch this. You have a week week to get acquainted with this anime, with this manga. Um, Both of them hold special places, you know, in my heart. They are really interesting and and really captivated and and captured my attention. So, the first one is uh, Kaku Shigoto, My Dad's Secret Ambition. That's the anime of the month. So, single father Kakoshi Goto has a secret. He's a top-selling artist of popular erotic manga, but his uh, impressionable young daughter, Hime, can never find out. Now he's having to bend over backwards just to keep her inquisitive little mind from discovering what he does for a living. A father-daughter tale of love and laughter uh, initially released April 2nd of this year, 2020, from Igeo Do Animation Works. Uh, created by Koji Kumeta, and it's only 12 episodes. You can watch it on Funimation and also Amazon Prime. Uh, it's one of those shows where it's it's a dad wanting to do the best he can for his daughter, but, you know, he, like, works for the mob. He's like, or he's a, he's a hit man or something like that. Like, oh, I love you, baby. Or um, I was going to say close to the professional, but the professional was like he, the girl, you know, her family – got murdered. They were trying supposed to kill everybody. He takes her in and raises her, kind of gets a soft spot for her. This is more like, I love my daughter with all my heart, but she can't know what I do for a living. It's so dis- despicable. It's so deplorable. Uh, so it's nice, funny show in 12 episodes. Beautiful. Manga of the month. And I didn't even put how many chapters on here. I think it is 48 chapters, maybe a little bit more. But the manga of the month is Samurai 8, The Tale of Hachimoru. Now, uh, I wish I had the picture for this. I'll have, again, go to patreon.com. You'll have the links and the pictures of this. This is, uh, well, a new series written by uh, Mashima uh, Kishimoto, the creator of Naruto. And then with art by Akira Okubo. A futuristic tale of a samurai adventure, Samurai 8, The Tale of Hachimuro is a Japanese manga series, uh, again, from the the writer of Naruto. So it's heavily influenced. You can see the art style, the battle style, the combat, the land, the layout, but it's beautiful. 
Uh, he can't run. He can't uh, eat hard food. He can't. Uh, okay, he can't run. He can't eat hard food. He can't do anything. You can't get any weaker than the boy named Hachimuro. But his dream is to become a samurai. For a boy who can't even survive without the help of his father, the dreams seem impossible. But when a samurai uh, cat appears before him, his whole life will change. A legendary manga creator and rising star come together to bring you the science fiction samurai epic. Now, I think, I mean, that's an okay way to describe it. The boy is basically on life support. He can't walk by himself. Like He needs a walker, which is... He, um, he's got modifications. So it's kind of like cyberpunk 2020 he has like a uh, arm that he can put on. And that arm that he puts on has a, um, like a walking stick, like a cane for him to walk on. Uh, he has to be fed by, uh, liquid. He hates needles. Uh, he just has like a very weak body and you find out there's a very narrative driven reason why, which is, few and far between, but this world of samurai is crazy because there's a video game based off of legendary tales of the dog samurai and his legendary rival. We don't know why they were fighting, but samurai are tied to a princess and the samurai and princess are bound to save the world. They are bound to save, to, to basically find other samurai or potential samurai, but save the universe. Um, and it's a story of love, but really like, Communication. I think that's something that was trying to push Naruto at the end of the series. And with this series, they start with it. And it is, it's very well done. Like, how do parents communicate to their children? How to other children that are misfortunate? Like, you have in this society, if you're not a samurai, you have no name. So they give you a, they brand you with the label. Do you want to be called that? No. How do you gain a name if you are, you can't fight? If you're scared of impact, if you can't see, like there's all these different things for these samurai to overcome if they are going to be samurai. But one of the greatest trials is your very first step to being a samurai is death. So again, the anime of the month is uh, Kakushigoto, My Dad's Secret uh, Ambition, which you can find on Funimation or Amazon Prime. And the manga of the month is Samurai 8, The Tale of Hachimuro fucking amazing kid wears glasses there's a cat and there's a dog so it's beautiful but that's your animated manga of the month i gave you all the news for this week thank you guys for joining me uh bear with me you know it's it looks like the stream was a little bit unstable um but again thank you for following level up gaming uh thanks for saying hi the chat was dead but i will be back right after this so um just stay tuned this is it for episode 241 of the elijah bailey show remember say hi to the buckety when you see him he will be in and out but you can always find him at blackstudios.com and all the new podcasts are over there as well which is that that's that's just fun and amazing in itself. <laughs> getting to hear some shows, getting to watch shows. Uh, make sure to follow them on YouTube. You can follow us on YouTube at Edge Gaming. Uh, again, there's 13 followers. Uh, the more you guys follow, the higher we get pushed up the ranks. So that way it makes it easier for everybody to find the page since we had to start all over on YouTube. But that is all I have for the show today. We're going to end this in, in the same amazing fashion that we always do. <laughs> yeah, the amazing fashion we always do. But the same way that we always do. With a little bit of, a little bit of outro music, a little bit of give. Um, make sure you guys send your emails to Elijah Bailey Show at gmail.com. If you don't like sending emails, simply subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, send any other information that you have um, on Twitter instagram snapchat at elijah bailey show and just top off the w that's sho at the end uh but i'm elijah 5000 the buckety sent his regards this is the elijah bailey show oklahoma's favorite podcast which you can find on apple podbeam spotify we also elected um what are the new source iheart radio there's so many there's a fm radio a lot of sources are trying to pick up the podcast now, so I will let you know when it drops there. But Pandora, we're on Pandora. We're on Spotify, uh, SoundCloud, wherever you want to go for your podcast. We're there. Again, I'm Elijah 5000. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Elijah Beta Show, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.